Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So what we're looking at here are the echoes of meteors as they're entering the Earth's atmosphere. Now, as these meteors enter the Earth's atmosphere, they burn up, briefly creating ionization, which is reflective to radio waves. Now, this occurs at an altitude of about 80 to 100 kilometers. So you may be asking yourself, if I can see the reflected echoes from the meteors that are burning up in the atmosphere, what is generating the RF source that's reflected? Well, for me, that's GB3 Mike Bravo Alpha, an 80 watt CW beacon, which has been designed to specifically illuminate a region in the atmosphere with a roughly 400 kilometer diameter, which is centered in the middle of the UK. Now, GB3 MBA is located at Sherwood Observatory of the Mansfield and Sutton Astronomical Society. The antenna used is a vertical one meter crossed Moxon antenna tuned for 50.408 megahertz, so just within the six meter handband. The custom beacon transmitter outputs around 80 watts of CW, with its ident transmitted every 10 minutes. Live telemetry of the beacon stats are available on the UK Meteor Beacon website. So if you want to try this yourself and you find that you're not receiving anything, first check the stats page to make sure the beacon is operational. Now, of course, this beacon is in the UK. And if you live within 200 kilometers of the center of the UK, you can get away with using a simple wired dipole. However, if you live up to 1200 kilometers away, then you need to rethink your antenna system and use something with a little bit more gain, like a Moxon or a Yagi. Now, as mentioned a couple of times before, this beacon's located in the UK, but I'm sure that it isn't the only beacon of this kind. For example, there's Graves Radar System in France, so yet another transmitter for meteor scatter monitoring. Now, I don't personally know of any that's in the US or Asia or Australia region, but if you do, then please link below so that others in your area can perform their own research and maybe try this example that I'm showing today. So let's talk about the equipment used in this video. So first off, I'm using a piece of software called SDR Console. This allows me to control and receive the data from an SDR, a software defined radio. In this case, I'm using an RSPDX from SDR Play, but of course you can use any SDR which is capable of receiving the beacon frequency, such as an RTL SDR, or an air spy module. Even a hack RF would be suited. Now in my first test to receive the meteor echoes, I simply used my NFED half wave antenna, which is actually designed for use between 3.5 and 29 megahertz, but it did work. And as a proof of concept, I was quite happy with the results. Now, as I live within 200 kilometers of the beacon, I should really be receiving these echoes a lot stronger. So I set out to build a simple wire dipole. Now each leg of the dipole is around 1.4 meters and in the middle I just used a one-to-one -one transformer as it was convenient to use as it already has an SO239 fitted. Of course you can be as crude as you like with this and simply connect the dipole wires to the end of a 50 ohm coax. Now I strung mine up quite low to the ground, maybe six to seven feet off the ground, attached between a tree in the corner of my garden and then off to a corner of the conservatory just as an initial test. Now, when I come back into the shack, I connected the dipole to port C on my RSPDX so that I could perform an A and B comparison between my NFED half wave and this mono band six meter wire dipole. Now, considering its height above ground, I was quite shocked with the results. Its receive on six meters is far stronger and I'm getting much more clear echoes showing on the waterfall. Now, the spectrum is also showing a nice strong peak where I'm receiving the beacon directly. Now on a normal given day, I probably couldn't receive it, but conditions on six meters or 50 megahertz were quite favorable today or at the time of recording. So I was able to receive it directly, which is good if you want to reference any Doppler shift. Now, when it comes to interpreting what all these lines and blips mean, well, don't look at me. Well, you can actually, this is totally new to me and it's going to be an enjoyable learning curve, figuring out what all these lines mean. What is apparent though, are those reflections which appear to change frequency. Now this I believe is called a Doppler shift, which happens when a transmission, or in this case, a reflected transmission, passes through the sky at speed. A bit like how the ISS or other ham radio satellites appear to change their downlink frequency as they move through the sky. Now Doppler shift is a whole nother story. 
and you're free to go and do your research on this yourself. Now, there are some distinct patterns here that we can pretty much guess what they are. The long, thin lines, which draw a kind of arch and drop in frequency, I would guess that these are mostly aircraft, mainly because of the length of the transmissions of the reflection. Now, meteors normally burn up quite fast, so seeing a trail like this might not be a meteor. These other little blips and patterns are, however, as far as I can tell, as the meteor burning up in the Earth's atmosphere. Some of these are no more than the size of a grain of sand, so they burn up quite quickly and only leave a small ionisation for the reflected signal to be picked up. The UK Meteor Beacon website does have a photo gallery of some detected meteors, and each one has a description of what they mean, so if you detect one, you can get an idea of its status and maybe do a little cross-reference. When it comes to using the SDR software, you do need to make some subtle changes. These are to slow the waterfall right down. You can see the speed at which my waterfall is going by looking at the timestamp on the right of the screen. Now, if you have it set too fast, then you're not going to get a clear picture of these detected meteors. You also need to zoom right in to have around 1.5 kilohertz bandwidth. I also use the CWU setting, but I don't think that matters too much as we're not really listening, but we're just viewing the waterfall. Now, SDR console is great for this application as the sidebars allow you to adjust the colors of the waterfall background noise and signal, which means you can tweak it to pretty much only show the reflections from the meteors and null out everything else. I would also suggest that you ensure you place your antenna in a location where it has the lowest noise level. Now, these signals are not particularly strong, so a low noise floor is quite critical. Anyway, guys, there we go. A first introduction into radio astronomy. And this is something that I never thought I would actually get myself into, but I found it really, really fascinating. Now, if you've done something similar to this, or if you live in another country apart from the UK where you know of any beacons that are dedicated for this project, then please let us know down in the comments below. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.